open. No gunshots, but they get in low, 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 get in low. What is up, guys? It's Snapsy here. Today I'm with you for episode 2 of my FIFA 16 career mode, and I started it off by going to search for a goalkeeper and that goalkeeper was Stoke City's Jack Butland. I think I offered 3 million to begin with, which Stoke I don't think were very happy with. I thought it was a pretty good offer, but anyways, I then went on to my scouts and told them that I want a centre back of first team quality because I seem to be lacking those, and to continue what they were doing. I then went to search for a defender, I searched for Eric Dyer from Tottenham. It says he's a CDM but he was originally a centre back and can still play that position. He was only 21, I offered 4 million and he was on 30,000 a week, so well within our price range. I then went into the squad to check if we were short on any positions. And one position in particular that I noticed apart from the ones I've already mentioned of centre back and striker was a left mid. Armand Troyeri, a left back, can play left mid but I needed someone else for the long championship season and Clinton Njaya from Tottenham was the man I tried to loan to cover that position. It says he's a striker but his amazing pace has led me to think that he can do it at left mid for me. So I then went and simmed this match in the European International Cup winning 1-0 as you could see there and the QPR board offering me some extra prize money for getting through. Then did the training with Brandon Conley doing especially well and simulated till the next day. Leandro Bakuna finally signed for us, so that's a great one for us. A really solid right back. And Brandon Conley got a short loan deal at Bradford, which is good for him because he's more likely to get a first team football. Bakuna was then put straight in the starting lineup ahead of James Perch, who went on to the reserves. And then I then uh, simulated till the next day. Day where Butland's transfer offer was rejected. I then offered double what I had previously to 6 million, which I thought was overpaying. And Ahmed Musa was the player I had particular interest on that scout report, so I asked my scouts to scout him further. I then went up and went up and changed the squad, as you can see, for the final match, giving a few players a run out based on energy or uh, whether I think they'd perform well or not. Clint Hill, as you can see, getting in there, and Alex Smithies having a chance in goal. Also, Tyler Blackwood making it to the bench. So it was then time for the next match, and I'm not going to even try to pronounce the name of that team because I will just get it really horribly wrong. But the good thing about that match was a 3-1 win. Very positive from an attacking point of view. A bit disappointing to let the goal in, but three goals, you can't say much bad about that. Clinton and Jaya finally signed on loan, and Eric Dyer, I offered a new off, uh, deal for him to Tottenham and then changed my budget to accommodate the wages I was going to take on and simulated to the PSV match, the final match, the final of the European International Cup. And the offer for Jack Button was rejected, so I decided to offer Rob Green and six million just so I could entice Stoke out of a goalkeeper. I then found this scout report from one of my scouts a little unrealistic with players like Vincent Company and Sergio Aguero in it but I was interested in Devante Cole and keeping Thierry uh, Ambrose on that list I then went to simulate this match I didn't play it I simmed it after changing the squad as you'll see now and the reason for that is that I believed that the team could win the game for me and I really wanted to get into the championship season and get into competitive games. That's what it's all about, winning the competitive games. And as you can see there, Clinton and Jaya going straight in at left mid to cover for Junior Hoylet, who was tired. So I simulated this match and unfortunately we lost 1-0. But that's not bad against a side who challenge for the title in Holland. My transfer offer for Eric Dyer was then accepted, so I was just doing contract details with him. I had to load a new player into the training, but that was no problem. And Eric Dyer there, as you can see, signed for Queen's Park Rangers. What a brilliant signing that is, and straight in over Gabriel Angela. So I then go and sort the squad out, put the, the strongest squad I could think of back onto the pitch for the first competitive game of the season, which was Bolton Wanderers away. As you can see there, me just sorting out the positions 
and who goes where on the bench. Then I advanced to see what emails I had coming through. Clint Hill telling me that he was thinking of retiring. My scout report came through from Russia again. Musa there, as you can see, valued at 5.5 million. I tried to put a cheeky bit of 4 million in just to see if they would part ways with him. I then got the scout report with da uh, Devante Cole on it, but he was recently moved, so I didn't find any luck there. This was a scout report from England as well with Will Keane on it and also the transfer offer from Stoke coming back as rejected. So I decided to search for Zoet who came up on my Dutch report, offered 3 million and Robert Green for him, Champions League goalkeeper. I then went back into training, obviously went to train the younger players and some of the better players in the squad with pretty good grades A, 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 C, B, B and then simulated the match forward to see what emails I was going to get. Devante Cole came through and as I said before there was no real luck there. I offered 300,000 originally and then made that 700,000 I think but neither offer was accepted. I had an offer for Neda Manua which I rejected. We don't really want to sell the main centre back at the moment and then a transfer offer for Carl Henry and I was pretty happy to let him go for 425,000. Then I skip forward a few days and the scout reports come back and I've finally found out Zoet's rating. Uh, Van der Beek and Dorst van Alken, who I decided to further scout. And there we go, there's an offer from PSV saying that they wanted more for Zoet and that I was not going to get Devante Cole because he was recently moved. And there we go, the 700,000 offer, which was again unsuccessful as you will see. I then got the player sold message from uh, Birmingham saying that they'd finally bought Carl Henry off of me so I was happy with that. Wages off of the wage bill and a little bit extra in the transfer budget. Again going to train the players there and skip forward a few days and PSV saying no he's too much, there's too little we want a lot more for Zoet so I also decided to give up that approach as well. Just going through this scout report here and Will Keane is the player I've decided to scout and I've gone to search for a BPL goalkeeper just looking at who I can get really thinking about decent first team goalkeepers under the age of 27 I think I made it. So I'm looking through the list there were a few goalkeepers that caught my eye but None that were really first in quality and of the age that I wanted them to be at. So I just went through this list, just quickly skimming through, seeing what was on offer, but not actually taking up any uh, or sending any transfer offers. I then decided to go back to the simulation to simulate to the Bolton game and get the emails that I was going to get. I looked at the scout report I got from Holland and eventually took Zoet off the scout report and looked at Sven van Beek. Uh, looking to buy him as a solid centre back and the other email was a transfer offer for Sandro from Leicester City which I counter offered to 3 million and that's going to be it for this episode guys just transfer business don't forget to leave a like comment on who you think I should buy and don't forget to hit that all important subscribe button see you guys later